We are live. Hi, Paul. Thank you Hi, for joining Julie. me today. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thanks for pleasure having me. To see you. Yeah, I've been really excited to introduce you to a lot of people out there. I feel like I'm talking about you, your family, um, your family setup, your family schooling, and most recently you as an education entrepreneur. Um, and so before we dive in to our conversation, um, I wanted to share a theme that I'd love us to dive into over the course cool. of this conversation. I'm feeling like with my own family's exploration of what's happening in education, changes, new trends, things shifting, especially due to the pandemic, that there's some misconceptions or people aren't quite sure what the word homeschooling or self-directed learning means. When you say that, I think people pop up with their own ideas or their own exposure to it. Mm -hmm. I think you are such an amazing example from both personal and business to peel back the layer uh, mm -hmm. or the curtain and give people a little bit more understanding of the possibilities and, and what's happening in the world. Um, so I thought a good place to start is if you could share how you have come here to this point as an education entrepreneur. I know you're a traveler. I know you've homeschooled your kids, but if you could give us a little bit of background, that would be amazing on who you are, Paul Bennett. Sure, sure. Um, yeah. Well, we, you know, my family and I uh, sort of opted out of the kind of normal route um, through traditional school a couple of years ago, about nine years yeah. ago. And we had our kids, um, they were born abroad and had a slightly unusual sort of early first years of school, but then we were, you know, decidedly mainstream, living in Philadelphia in a cute little row house and sent our kids to a beautiful neighborhood school. And, and there was actually nothing wrong with that. Um, mm. But we are adventurers and we had this dream of taking our kids um, and going on a great, you know, family travel adventure. Mm -hmm. My wife, Lonnie, and I had done something similar pre-kids. We'd sailed across the Atlantic Ocean for two years. And so we had that in mind, like, we've got to take the kids sailing and, and you know, we'll, we'll figure school out. So we didn't quit our jobs because we were running our own company, but we bought a boat and we went down to the Caribbean and we set off. And um, our kids were between the ages of five and 10 at the time. Yeah. And, you know, the school that they were in said, look, you're, you know, they're going to get so much out of this voyage with you. Don't worry about the school. Um, and we knew we would be coming back to that school. And so that, that was actually very comforting. So we didn't worry about school that first year. We had a real idealized vision of the journey would be the school and we would make it up as we went along. And we got onto some homeschooling blogs and we learned about sort of project-based learning and, you know, making these um, flat books and stuff like that. So, you know, we had a, a very light plan. <laughs> to mm -hmm. sort of do school in each place. And it was a disaster. Uh, the first year was just a, a crushing defeat. And we What's a disaster and, look like? What's a disaster? You know, the, the kids, um, I mean, we have good kids, so they didn't like, you know, uh, push back on us too much, but it was hard to get them to do mm -hmm. their work. Um, but more importantly, figuring out what work to be done. You know, right. at that age, um, you sort of have to be your kid's teacher. Uh, and we were not teachers. We were not curriculum planners. And we didn't have a plan. Um, so at the end of the year, exhausted, Lonnie and I looked at each other and said, look, if we're going to continue sailing, and we sailed for two years on that trip, we're going to need a plan. Um, yeah. So we sat down. We did a lot of research on curricula. Um, we had a very particular situation because we were living on a boat. So we were low bandwidth, constantly on the move. Um, so that meant that a whole category of, of offerings that are there for homeschoolers didn't apply to us. So we could right. not sign up for scheduled classes online with other you really students. really had to think you know, outside the box. 
Yeah, and we had to find stuff that was asynchronous. Um, but luckily, there is quite a bit out there, and we found things that worked for us. We sort of pick and chose a few things. I think if memory serves, we had a kind of out of the box curriculum for our youngest daughter, and then we kind of pick and chose different classes for our middle and, and oldest daughter. And um, and then we layered that into that, some things that we just sort of taught to them as well. And the second year was great. It had structure, mm. everyone knew what to expect, and the kids began you know, honing these, these habits of what eventually I would come to call self-directed learning. Um, they right. weren't self-directed learners quite yet, but they were starting to kind of see, you know, live the pattern of it. Anyhow, we did that for two years, went back to normal life. Normal life really didn't feel great. Our kids were, I mean, they were okay in school, but they didn't love it. And they really wanted to get back out and continue the journey. So three years later, we went out again. And at this point, <clears throat> my oldest daughter, was just finishing 10th grade so she had two more years of high school right. um and she had, so she had seen what like real high school was like and then behind her her sister Cleo was two years behind and then Jade's another three years so we had sort of late primary through middle school into high school age too right and you know so much is at stake with a high schooler right I mean we she wants you know she wanted to go to college or she was on that path we wanted her to go to college and you know it's a heavy lift you gotta you gotta get good grades from a good school and it's hard to get into school yeah so we were nervous about it um and you know we knew so we had this pattern um from our last voyage where we had used these curricula and that had worked out well but we weren't sure it was enough and specifically the thing we knew was missing was the connection with a teacher you know, when you're doing things from video, you're doing a asynchronous learning and you don't have a, a teacher there. I mean, all they had was us. And, and, you know, we have a great relationship, but we felt like that. I mean, I look back at my high school, right? And what do I remember from my high school besides, you know, having fun with my friends is a couple of amazing teachers who changed my life. You know, right. there was Mamie Balduccio, my history teacher, just blew He's my mind. You know. I love so it. I, I remember these. I, I actually yeah. am still friends, friends with these people, you know, and it, it really had a huge impact. Wow. So we were like, okay, how can we make that happen? And so what we decided to do um, was we put out an ad um, looking for an English language arts teacher, ELA. Um, right. And we figured we would hire a teacher to work with Stella primarily just to keep, she's a good writer and a good reader, but to kind of keep her skills at that cutting edge so that she could you know, have a good college right. application. So we found this amazing teacher, Hadley Roach, um, and we started working with her. And it was, you know, it was challenging because we were on the other side of the planet, 12 hours, time 14 zones. hours. Time this is before different. we're all in Zoom and- Right, yeah, yeah. All, yeah. not in Zoom. But we made it work uh, and we found a kind of a pattern and a cadence um, that was amazing. And most importantly, the relationship that Stella built with Hadley was, it was palpable. I mean, I could just, I could see it, feel it, and she was just accelerating in her learning. Um, and we could see this compared to everything else she was doing. Um, and everything else she was doing was good. This was just so much better. Because of the relationship and the connection? The relationship, yeah. the connection, the customized itinerary, I mean, um, uh, curriculum, <laughs> it's like an itinerary, right? Yeah, you can I tell mean, your travel background. Yeah, you just right. had a tell there, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, Hadley came in um, with one book that she knew she wanted to, to study with Stella. Mm. And then in the first few weeks, they built a reading list. They built a plan for what she was going to write about. So, they, together. they evolved together, right? Right. So it was right. a collaboration that meant Stella had ownership and then it was really personalized to her right. and, and her goals. And of course, Hadley's a professional teacher. She has a master's degree from the Breadloaf Writing Institute in the middle. I mean, she's like top, top notch. So she yeah. knew that her job was to meet Stella where she was and take her farther. Right. So she was constantly right. pulling Stella, you know, farther. So we, we saw that and we we're like, okay, this is a game changer. And the next semester we hired Hadley for the other 
two kids. They each have individual classes with her. We went out and found a math teacher. We found a science teacher. We found a Latin yeah. teacher. And eventually, you know, currently today, our steady state still is off at university. So, you know, that worked out fine. Um, and Cleo, my middle daughter, does two classes mm -hmm. uh, with private teachers and Jade does three. And it's, uh, it's completely changed our, our lives and our kids' lives. Actually, I want, I, thank you for sharing that. I wanted to, before we dive into the work you're doing with supporting other families, I think one of the points of resistance or families looking into self-directed learning or homeschooling, especially if their kids are in high school, is exactly to your point. It starts to get serious and parents are like, well, I can't just pull my kid out and do this new fandangle thing. We'll keep them in the system. We know it works. It's tried and tested. I love to use your family. And I have a lot of actually families with teens who've gone on from self-directed learning to thrive in university and beyond. But I'd love for you to just pinpoint some of the outcomes you saw with your girls. If they'd stayed on the traditional track, and obviously self-directed isn't for everyone, but for those who are like, mm, I don't know, I'm exploring it, but I'm worried they're not going to thrive. What are outcomes you could point to for your girls uh, due to their learning situation uh, that you fostered? Well, I'll give you two, um, sort of the really important outcome um, that's kind of conceptual. Um, and then the other much less important, but very tangible. Um, yeah. So the kind of the conceptual one is you, you know, when you engage in self-directed learning and you take responsibility for it, you grow as a person, um, right? Yeah. So you're, you're not on the tracks. There's no, you know, no safe guardrails. I mean, there's some guardrails, but not the guardrails that you have when you just are in high school and you're, you know, every, every class, there's a bell that rings at the end of the class. It tells you to go to the next class, right? You're, you know, it's like a yeah. verbal existence in some level. You don't have any of that. Um, and you have to, you have to build that. And the process of building that, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it has lots of outflows. There's confidence. Um, there's a kind of mindset uh that evolves but also what you learn is you almost professionalize how to learn you become a learn a, a student of learning um yeah. rather than just a student who's like trying to get through you actually become really good at the art of learning and that is a skill that obviously is useful in high school and useful in college and you know, graduate level but even think, yeah. you know, hope just to, to life today, you know, as a Oh my goodness. Professional. Well, you and I are I mean, both entrepreneurs. And I think we right. as entrepreneurs know that that is going to, whether your girls become entrepreneurs or my kids become entrepreneurs, the life in the future is going to require them to look for opportunities and be more actualized, I think. Yeah. Um, and to be and to be entrepreneurial and able to, to make things happen, yeah. even if they don't actually become entrepreneurs the future is entrepreneurial, right? So, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, our our kids, I think the actuarial lifespan of our kids is like 100, 105, right? Something like that. Mm -hmm. um, that's a long lifetime, right? And they are, they are not going to live the old fashioned, you know, three stage life where you spend a third of your life studying, a third of your life working, a third of your life you know, retire. I mean, you and I aren't even going to live that. They certainly aren't. They're going to be going in and out of, you know, periods of work, periods of, of reinvestment through education or travel, yeah. periods of, you know, and they're going to need to upskill all through their career, which they're going to start in one place and they're going to end somewhere else um, to a degree that we can't even fathom, even though we're having to do that ourselves today. Totally. So, to be a rock star learner from the get go, I mean, you're just talking about setting your kid up. Like that is that's the biggest um, outcome. The sort of less important is that you know if you go to a normal high school, you're in the normal track for college, and it is right. incredibly competitive. And it is so hard. Never to been stand harder. Out. Never yeah. been harder. Right. Yeah. Um, whereas if you go off on a different path and one that requires you to step up 
take responsibility, become a mm. lifelong learner and really learn some amazing, unusual, atypical skills, you yeah. become a much better candidate. Um, and it's that, almost- I got to put a pin in that because it's the opposite. I think of what most <laughs> people opposite. think. You get off the track and you're no longer yeah. a competitor. But I would argue, even speaking to college admissions, the more you can step into your own light and stand out as an individual, the more you are yeah. a competitor and you you are seen as an asset to any program. Yeah. Provided mm -hmm. the, you're a great student, obviously. But yeah. I think your girls, they didn't just go to any university. I mean, they're applying to top universities. So I think it is, you may not want to boast, but I'll boast for you. Meeting your girls. And I would say this for most people I have met, or actually all who have followed a self-directed path, their kids are the greatest um, broadcasters for this route because mm. they shine as themselves. And I would say that is an outcome um, that I have noticed for sure in your girls, in meeting them on a boat in Bali, you know, they're traveling around. They are so uniquely themselves. And I'm yeah. sure you and Lanny found it so cool to watch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a big thank you for that. And yeah. I think, a, a, you know, a part of it is, you know, the way we set up school, but also a part of it is the way we set school has unlocked a way of living. Um, yeah. And we put a lot of energy and effort into that, into the non-academic part of their development. Because, you know, what we're doing here as parents is we're cooking up human beings. And human mm -hmm. beings are not, you know, good, just good at math and can write and, you know, whatever. It's not just the academic subjects. It's also... Yeah. You know, are they adventurous? Are they kind? Are they, you know, mm -hmm. can they repair a diesel engine? <laughs> you know, all these kinds of things, right? And can um, your girls repair a diesel engine? Yes. Oh, sweet. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What are what are some other really uh, out there skills that you've seen them develop? Just I'm curious. You know, in terms of, I mean, they can do, we live on a boat, right? So they can do a lot of boaty right. things. Um, they can fix stuff. They can like repair fiberglass. They can surf and kite surf and free dive and scuba dive, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I think their, maybe their sort of most impressive skill uh, that's come out of our lifestyle is their ability to, um, to enter into a kind of challenging, very foreign culture. You know, so we spent yeah. almost a year in Papua New Guinea uh, and the Solomon Islands, which is a very different place than Philadelphia, where we were from. And our, our kids are super comfortable in places like that. They're happy mm -hmm. to eat, you know, um, taro Whatever. and sticky cabbage and all of that. And go in, you know, we would we drag them all the time into the villages because you have to, when you sail into a village, you have to go meet the chief right. and ask You're forced permission. to, right. Yeah. So, you know, and, uh, you know, some boats would go in and, and, and the captain, which is usually the dad, would go ashore and meet the chief and drink kava with them. And no, we drag our kids up to the hut, sit on the ground, you know, make the kava, have a sip of it. They'd have to carry me home in Vanuatu because of Kava. Is like, <laughs> Moonshine. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Those, um, those experiences, I think, are, you know, as important, if not more important than some of the academic stuff that, that they've done. Well, I mean, I know that cruising, which is you've taught me the terminology for families that boat around the world, cr cruising, right? Cruising yeah. isn't for everybody um and we our family loves to travel and we would consider ourselves quite nomadic um i don't know if cruising is for us but i think the actual like for some families it's brilliant for periods but i think it's finding that recipe that works for you right right and 100 percent I think yeah. for some people it's cruising some people it's taking like a sabbatical and and maybe you're noticing this and I'm keen to dive into your work um, with Cicero learning is that the pandemic has done a bit of a shakeup to everybody. Right. And yeah. you, know, you guys traveled before the pandemic, we did also. And I think now the pandemic, I'm noting that people are assessing 
They're reflecting, they're asking questions. And they've also seen their kids in school and seen what they're learning due to the Zoom online classrooms and being like, hey, wait a minute. I'm not so sure this is the best way possible. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm noting an uptick of families looking for different options or opportunities, um, which I'd love to hear what you're noting. You're currently yeah. where, Paul? Tell us where you are. I'm in, I'm in Cape Town, South Africa. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And that you found yourself in Cape Town. And are you noticing more and more people contacting you saying, hey, Paul, tell us more about your lifestyle or how do we do what you're doing? Yeah, 100%. Um, so, you know, at the beginning, you were you were sort of asking some questions about kind of categories, homeschoolers and da, da, da. So there's, right. you know, there's two big buckets, which is people who go to a normal brick and mortar school and people who don't. Um, right. And prior to the pandemic, it was pretty healthy. And we, we, we can call that group who don't homeschoolers, um, although right. they they then, you know, divide into lots of really interesting groups, which we should talk about. Um, mm -hmm. But that group was like 4% of the population, I think, three and some change in, in the United States, in the right. U.S. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, it's a pretty big group. And we were part of that group. We were all sailing around. Um, after the pandemic, everyone's gone back to school. That number is more than doubled. So I think we're up at like 7% of the yeah. U.S school population. I think it's actually really? eight now. Eight. I just saw okay. a stat. Yeah. yeah. It's, and, and it's growing. I mean, we need to keep on top of it because that number is, is growing I know, very, I know. very yeah. quickly. Um, so yeah, I mean, our phone is ringing off the hook with um, families who have stepped out of that first bucket. And now yeah. they're in this second bucket, but they're not sure like where to be in that bucket. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one big part of that bucket is homeschoolers um, who have been homeschooling for a long, long time. Um, and I've been connected to this group ever since we went on that first boat trip. Um, and they, you know, live lots of different kinds of lives. There's the, you know, uh, sort of prototypical living in a rural area and living off the land, whether they're, you know, to the right politically or left, and they sort of all meet around in the back and they're, um, yeah. and then you've got this group who do that on the road. So world schoolers. Um, right. And we, we know, dipped our toes are, into that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so you have some people who do that like hardcore all the time and they're in a boat or RVing. There's a lot of RV schoolers out there and that's grown. Um, right. It's a lot during the pandemic. And then you have this cool group like yourselves, you and Charlie and your kids who have kind of dipped in and out and have dipped in. And then instead of dipping back, um, like when you guys went on your, your yeah. tour, which was close to a year, right? Where you it was a year. Yeah. 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 And then, then you wind and up. And then we body. were like, we can't put the genie back in the bottle. So then we right. land at a school in Bali. Right. Yeah. Right. And not, and not just any school. I mean, that school is on the spectrum. Green school. Um, yeah. So. Uh, and now you're now Sophia's off, uh, you know, doing it again. Um, and your yeah. family is thinking about options. And we've been talking to a lot of families like this who have been thinking for a long time, dreaming about, oh, maybe we should go do, you know, fill in the blank. Um, and now post pandemic, they see that they can work from anywhere. Their mm -hmm. kids can school from anywhere. Um, and so, okay, let's have more serious conversations about this. And then their conversations are like, but how exactly is it going to work? And one of the big sticking points is education, especially if you've got yeah. a high school age kid and the stakes are high and you're like, God, what if I screw it up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I totally get that because I was there and frankly, I'm still there. I mean, I, I don't have all the answers and, and, um, you know, I, I still worry, but like any parent, like, God, is it really, you know, is this exactly the right path? But of course, we're now but at Paul, a point. Sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but I would say even parents who put their kids into the top schools anywhere, there's always that sure. voice in the back of your head being like, should I be doing something different? Am I doing right. the right job as a parent? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you have delegated a huge amount of responsibility to yes. the school. And so when mm. you when you 
take and and schools are a lot about brands you know the very best public schools the very best private schools and and parents are doing the job of sort of an investor in that and saying i need to pick the right brand and once mm. i have like i'm gonna leave it and set it there. yeah set it and forget it right um <laughs> yeah. and so this is this is different um and maybe harder uh because you're not setting and forgetting it you're mm. like you know building a business or building anything you're constantly analyzing constantly tweaking constantly making sure okay next semester is there anything you're always asking is there anything here that we can improve that would really help you know jade yeah. cleo and stella in my in my case um but i i love that because it means that i'm like engaged i'm thinking about it we what it's done for us, this lifestyle, is it's made us great communicators with each other. So we, we don't do anything in our boat school without buy-in from the kids, right? So, mm -hmm. um, in fact, I just just before your family I, meetings. Do you have your family uh, meetings? Less we formal. Are, we they're less formal. We eat dinner together every night, so we sort of yeah. you know have a little bit of discussion. Um, but then we it's more pointed. You know, for example, just before I got on this call. Jade and I, for several days, she's taking a computer science class that is mm -hmm. self-directed. So she just, it's all on Khan Academy. She did all the coding. Now she has to do a project. This is me. This is less self-directed. This is me saying, okay, it, for this to be a course, you have to do a project. Yeah. You have to build, build something. Yeah. And we had a meeting, an hour long meeting. It was on the calendar, sat down. Okay. What are your project ideas? I gave her feedback. At the end of the day, she picked a project, you know, in collaboration with me. Um, and my yeah. job is to sort of curate that, push it along, be a bit of an impeller, be a support, you know, whatever it takes. I mean, frankly, it's not that much different than professional work. work. You know, work, yeah, working with. Oh, what's cool is for entrepreneurs, and again, this lifestyle is not for everybody, but we spend a lot of time supporting, coaching, mentoring getting in the weeds with people who aren't in our right. family. And I think it changes the dynamic when you're able to have conversations like that with your kids. And mm -hmm. it really opens up pathways for new interests and ways to connect, especially during the teen years. So I think that's another outcome, Paul. I'll just raise my hand that I'm already seeing the benefits in our own family. Um, I would love for you to share a bit more about this company that you're building. I mean, you've gone from cruising and hodgepodge piecemealing this, your amazing education for your girls, because I've seen their transcripts. You've been so lovely to share. I'm like, what does a transcript look like from a girl or three <laughs> girls who school on a boat? And people, let me tell you, these are mind blowing transcripts. Um, but I guess you, uh, you you realized at some point i think i got a business here what happened yeah so well first of all just the transcript that's 100 percent lonnie you know she's uh the graphic just kind of an art background graphic design and then she really studied what, what she goes okay um right. and we're you know we're a partnership so one of the so yeah we woke up one day and realized there's definitely a business here at least for a for this niche Mm -hmm. sector of world schoolers and you know homeschoolers who sort of see the world through the lens that that we see it and we're lucky that um you know that segment is is growing so we're sort of launching into a, a growing market You're well positioned yeah it i mean it's very i mean the story is sort of similar to our first business which you alluded to before as a travel business um, and mm -hmm. came out of our own experience as world travelers. And we, you know, experienced the pain in that business. What we did was called context travel. I mean, it still exists today. Um, and it connects intellectually curious travelers. So that's, that's us. We love to learn mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with local experts. <clears throat> and we had encountered that pain living on a sailboat pre kids. This is when we sailed across the Atlantic. And I was working as a journalist and I, every place we went to, I needed to find a local expert who could be my source to write a story mm. for Islands Magazine or National Geographic or whoever I was working for. So that business solved that problem. The same with Cicero, right? So we have this problem, which is we need a really great teacher. It's not me. 
I'm not a great math teacher. I'm not a great biology teacher. Um, right. I'm not even, you know, I, all my degrees are in sort of humanities and literature. I'm not even a good <laughs> teacher in those. And, and, right. Right. And then let's Guess not what? forget the parent child connection we're it's talking just, about, exactly. building connections. Yeah. It's, it's still not great to be the yeah. sole teacher for all families, I think. So, yeah. yeah. No, some, some families it works out really well. And I, I've met, right. I've met, it's usually moms, um, not always, but I've met a lot of moms who are their children's teachers and they are amazing. Um, mm. that's, that's not us. Um, I mean, between Lonnie and I, I'm more that way. And I do sort of guide a few classes with the kids, but right. look, we realized we have a problem here. We need professional help. <laughs> so, Call so you help. know. Right. <laughs> so, you know, we just, you know, we're living the product. We can see it right in front of yeah. us. Like, this is amazing. Yeah. It is helping our kids. Um, so as we were floating through Indonesia a few years ago, we were like, let's think through this. Like, how would it work? And yeah. a lot of the ways we we're thinking about it are very similar to how we thought about context. You know, it's matching. It's finding, you know, an incredible group of teachers, vetting them, curating them, making sure we know sort of what their style and approach and, and skill sets are, and then figuring mm -hmm. out a way to understand what it is that our families need, um, mm -hmm. our customers. That's a much more complicated issue than with the travel company because generally everybody wants more or less the same thing, like an amazing tour right. of the Vatican with their top experts. Um, families are a little different, right? You've got kids at different age levels. You've got kids with different learning styles. We have right. families coming in who have um, learning difficulties. Um, you know, a family yeah. knocked on our door the other day and their um, 16 year old has selective mutism. Um, and so there's some challenges mm -hmm. there and we're not gonna be able to address all of those challenges. I mean, that's kind of a, a big issue with education generally, but right. there are a lot of needs that we probably can fill with by matching expert and, right. and student. The other key thing we've learned, um, and we, you know, we couldn't articulate this out of the box, but we started kind of putting this together and getting families in and setting them mm -hmm. up with teachers, is that it's very much a sort of three-way contract. I mean, everyone's talking about contracts these days because of blockchain, mm -hmm. but it, it's it's like a three-way agreement. You've got the student, with the student kind of at the center of it, um, mm -hmm. you've got the student's needs, interests, aspirations, but you need to have buy-in from teacher, student, and family, right? The family has goals, totally. the things that they want to accomplish. We need to know yeah. what that is. We have student, she has needs and desires and interests. And then we've got a teacher who's got a skill set and an approach. And those mm. things all have to triangulate together to make magic happen. Um, and yeah. that's that's like the IP of the business is that mm. building, is that ability to pull that together. Well, you are very much a relationship person. Um, and I've seen this in the way you run your business, um, how you travel with your family. So from our perspective, um, we are users of the Cicero platform. I think watching you guys with your kids was enough for us to say, you know what, the high school situation isn't working so brilliantly uh, for Sophia, why don't we give this a go? Um, I think knowing that there is this sort of backbone to it that does have academic rigor, but also there's an ability for it to be very customized and relationship based. Mm -hmm. And for us, it, it actually really forced us to pause and think, what kind of outcomes do we want for our child, child's learning, which is not yeah. something when you set it and leave it, it's not something that you think about actively. So we were forced to actively think, what do we want here for Sophia mm -hmm. and Alfie again? And one of them was, we want them to love learning. And we noticed being back in the system, the system's pretty stressed out right now. The teachers are stressed out. The students are stressed out. Families are stressed out. So mm -hmm. it felt overwhelming, I think, especially for Sophia. And I have to, to 
give you guys a shout out. I think one of the coolest things about your program, Cicero Learning and self-directed learning with one teacher is they're being seen. The kids are being seen. And right. I think in today's world, to really be seen and listened to and to be able to co-create and collaborate builds a confidence from an, another place. And yep. we noticed Sophia, who was feeling overwhelmed in a system that was like taxed and stressed out. People sort of take it as like, it is just what it is. It's stressy. It's awful. It's just school. Do it. And we were mm -hmm. like, you know what? We're going to try this and just watch how she responds. Paul, yep. in six weeks, no, it's five weeks. She physically looks better. She's so excited about her learning. Uh, she's taking English with one of your teachers who has, like your girls, they've created this book list that is like 12 books deep for a 13 week program on top of writing, on top of poetry. I mean, the amount she's doing is crazy compared to school, but she's loving right. it. Um, yeah. I mean, it's really it, I mean, cool. one, one of the things that you, the point you're making is if you, if you focus on fundamental principles like yeah. confidence and unlocking creativity, totally. what then follows is you have a confident learner who's like super excited and on fire. And then the rigor happens. Like, it is, it's a byproduct of the yeah. doing, keeping the house in order, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that we were concerned about, like lots of parents, and I want to bring this up publicly, is, is we were like, mm, she's pretty organized, but can she really handle this? And that's something that parents are like, well, you know, in high school, do we really want to drop her in and see if she can handle this self-directed figuring out? Some of the courses she's taking on her own, some she's taking with teachers in person and some with you guys. And we were like, that's a lot to handle. But you know what? Yeah. In five weeks, she's figuring out her systems. She's learning how to schedule. She's learning how executive function, like, you know, organizing herself. Those are life yeah. skills that I think some kids who are had their hands held all the way through. I'm speaking to kids who are getting out of university or in university and they're like, I don't even know what to do. I, no one's yeah. telling me, so I don't know how to turn or what's a priority. And right. I, I kind of feel like that is something I want to highlight for anyone on the edge of like, is this a good route? I think yeah. that the, the skills that come from this setting um, are super important for life. I agree. I think so setting is sort of sets it up. You need to have these skills to survive in the setting. <clears throat> I think there's a lot of work to be done, and you and I have been having a lot of conversations about this, of yeah. building resources for kids to to teach them how to be organized, um, productive, mm -hmm. balanced. You know, and you think about, I mean, there's there's so much out there for professionals. And it's probably because mm -hmm. when we were in high school, we didn't learn any of this stuff or college. And so like no. the college graduate, you just mentioned, I mean, I was clueless when I got out. I'm still a little yeah. clueless. So there is an incredible industry out there of productivity hacks for professionals and serious professionals who want to you know, move through a corporation or start a business or whatever. They invest a lot in upskilling in those areas and being really, really on right. their their game. Well, why aren't we providing those tools to high schoolers and middle schoolers, right? I mean, why wait until you're in, in the workforce to learn this stuff? No, learn it early. I'm not yeah. saying it's like top priority. It should, you know, forget physics, learn, you know, how to do, how to recondo your life. But you do need to start early on figuring out how to be productive, organized, be on top of your work. You know, that when we had our kids in Rome, you know, the kids were born in Rome and they did their first schooling there. And we sent them to this beautiful little Montessori school. And it was my first time, you know, being exposed to Montessori mm -hmm. teaching. And of course they have this concept of work. Everything that kids do is work in, in the, mm -hmm. it's fantastic. This is, they're doing their work. We're doing our work. They're doing their work. So why don't we develop you know, tools to help them learn how to do their work better. Um, and so I think there's, 
as we've discussed before, there's a lot of yeah. work to be done here to build productivity tools for kids. I agree. And I think for some, it's, you know, tiny little little um, tidbits that they could try out or kids when they're in a pickle in the regular system yeah. and they need study skills. Like my mind has been on, not everyone wants to jump into being a global nomad, fine. But I think there are elements or ingredients from that lifestyle that could benefit even families who will never go away and travel or maybe never homeschool their kids. And so I'm trying to find ways to inspire families who are looking from the outside of like, hmm, maybe we could try this for a semester to get our kids back into loving learning or mm -hmm. take a year sabbatical just to reconnect as a unit. And that mm -hmm. is a benefit. Um, I wonder if there's ever opportunity for Cicero to do like one course. Do you ever work with families who have their kids in regular school and they need like one course support? Do you do that as yeah. like a bridge? I guess what I'm saying is like the old paradigm to this new paradigm. What bridges are we helping people to, yeah. you know, cross that gap? We have done that. We had a, <clears throat> sorry, we had a family this past fall that did mm. that. Um, it was challenging um, and there were, there were pluses and minuses to it. One of the minuses is that, you know, school is overwhelming. You're there, whatever, right. seven hours a day. Um, and so if you're going to add on a class in addition yeah. to school, it's, it's more, it's more work. Um, yeah. We started doing it you know, in the afternoon, and then that conflicted with activities. So then we did it on the weekend. And now the kid was going to school all week and then too doing much. Saturday too much, right? It was overwhelming. Right. And I, I think it's important to be to be sensitive to that. Um, <clears throat> on the other hand, uh, the this child was not getting this was a <clears throat> it was also an English language arts class. This child right. was was just not there in terms of writing. Um, and in a semester, we were able to really help him level up uh, and, you know, emerge as a much stronger writer. So, right. you know, I guess yeah, it's work, it, maybe even working with, uh, <clears throat> I can see an ideal would be if a school was like maxed out or the child right. is in the public system, not a private school. And they're like, they're just not getting their English or their math because of the classroom dynamics, because of whatever factors to literally take that child for that class yes. and say, we're, we're gonna yes. plug in. Take an hour out I'll of plug school in. and then go, yeah, right. Yeah, right. I mean, that would be ideal, but we can dream. Mm -hmm. I think we're all in the business of innovating. And um, my, my passion is to connect people with new ideas and inspire them that there's a lot of different possible pathways, especially for mm -hmm. our kids' future. I think there's a lot of peeling, people feeling like there's not much hope, there's not much possibility um, for where education is going, and I, I believe otherwise. I think there's mm -hmm. so many cool things. Um, I'd love to, to sort of end by you sharing what amazing inspiration you've gotten in the education industry right now. Like, what are you totally inspired by? Well, there's just, there's so much going on. I mean, even, you know. Um, Give us a little um, snack. What, what, are you, oh, what are you witnessing? <laughs> uh, I mean, it, well, you shared with me, you know, Prisma, and of course, everyone's looked at Galileo. These are, these are amazing platforms that are mm -hmm. going to change education. They're well-funded. They're getting, you know, students in. And I think just kind of in a macro sense, they're going to have a very, um, you know, positive impact on um, on education. I love the micro school concept, mm. which is almost like a we work for education. Um, yeah. And frankly, if there was one near us, we probably would also sign up for that, right? So if, in case your listeners don't know, I mean, I mean, all these micro schools are a little different, but there was one, I think, down in Georgia that I was really interested in that is basically you sign your kid up. I think it's a subscription service. They can go for X number of hours a day. And yeah. it's just a space, space for them to work, be with other kids. 
there it's like a maker space so they can do projects and things you know it's just a lot of stuff there there's also a hangout place for parents if they want to socialize and it's you know beautifully designed you know i think i think that concept is super exciting because it's uh it's a flexible you know and we it, and we also love that one and i've got my eye on a bunch they're popping up because yeah. the overhead infrastructure isn't expensive they don't need mm -hmm. a hefty brand and i think the online experience you know that you guys are having and we're having you can get the best teachers in the world and there's still that factor we haven't even talked about but it's the socialization and i think right. that's often a concern of parents like i don't want my child to just be online and not be in the social setting of school I would argue, mm -hmm. and you guys would probably support, is that there's all sorts of other social settings that you can have your kid be immersed in that don't look like the school hierarchy, um, no. that isn't always the healthiest one. I think there are, you know, clubs and volunteering and having jobs and, you know, socialization yeah. looks like all sorts of things. It doesn't have to just look like school. Yeah. Yeah. No, my kids have an incredibly vibrant uh, social life. And, yeah. you know, and, and they're very different. I mean, my, my two kids who are still at home. So Cleo, my oldest, who's you know graduating this year, um, she is super, super social. So she is, you know, a life, she's in life saving down at the beach. She volunteers at the aquarium. She's got friends. You know, she's, she's always, mm -hmm. always doing something social. And then Jade, who's much quieter, more introverted, definitely the kind of kid that you think, wait a minute, she's homeschooling. Is she going to become like antisocial? Mm. Oh, my God, that kid is also I mean, she goes to dance class twice a week. She goes to theater class on Saturday. She plays tennis. She also volunteers with the, the dog, you know, SPCA shelter. Place, you know, dog shelter. Right. So it's like, I'm and, so and, glad and, we're and, ending on this because this is what people are like. Homeschool equals my child has no social life. And I think no. as we come out of the pandemic and there's micro schools, there's, you know, so many options for your kids. And the social, I would argue, is perhaps healthier because, you know, in school, yeah, unhealthy things happen, right? I mean, never in your life are you stuck together with 40 people the same exact age as you right? In your life, you're always dealing with people older than you and younger than you. Um, yeah. And so like Jade, when she goes and works at the dog shelter, her friends are all like 21 years old, you know, and then yeah. she goes to dance and she's got younger kids in there or theater rather. She's got younger kids. Mm -hmm. And so she's having to, and, and as a result, like I have, you know, we never hear any of the stories you hear from like middle school and, you know, of yeah. like, bullying and you know people being mean to each other it's like no they actually move on because it actually their social life looks a lot like society and we're not animals <laughs> no. No. we want to yeah. we want to work with each other um i just think something sometimes goes sideways when we put kids in really unusual unhealthy environments like with 40 of their you know exact same age kids you know i couldn't agree more um, and I'm noticing the same with Sophia. She is thriving and has different friends and different different kinds of social interactions, which I love. Um, I would love for you, Paul, to share with our listeners who may be parents, who could be educators, who could be entrepreneurs, curious about what's happening in the education space. How can people reach you? How can they find you? Sure. So they can, uh, we have a website, uh, so you can go to cicerolearning.com. Um, and we have a, a Twitter feed. I think it's Cicero Learn. And we have I'll put all of these page. in the links. Yeah. yeah right. And, uh, and my email is scattered through all of that. So people can, can email me, phone me, whatever. You're an Turn amazingly collaborative chap, which I yeah. really love. <laughs> At you and... Lonnie and uh, and Paul just actually put up a really cool link to behind the scenes of Cicero. What do these classes look like? I thought that was such a great idea and I'll invite everybody to take a look who's curious. Um, Paul, thank you so much for your time and a little splash of sunshine from, from South Africa to me and Tilly, <laughs> Quebec.
<laughs> and uh, we love we love what you're doing. Our family's benefiting, and I hope more people reach out and find out more about you guys. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk about something I love. I can tell. Take care, Paul. All right. Bye-bye.